to Tomorrow by Today. I'm Sydney Sadik, and thanks for being here with us on this Friday afternoon for our weekly conversation series. Today, we are welcoming the one and only star of Shadow and Bone, Ben Barnes, you guys. We are so excited to have Ben joining us right here on Tomorrow by Today on this Friday afternoon. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Yes, take two. We are very excited to get this conversation started with Ben. He's going to be with us right now so we can get all of your questions answered. And like I said, if you submit your questions at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, we'll be able to get your questions answered live and in the is now that I'm having a connection issue. Of course, that'll be our last thing with Ben right now. Let's get this conversation started. And here we go, you guys. We are connecting. Let's do it. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good, Ben. How are you? Thanks for I'm being good. here with Thank us. You. Hello, everyone. I apologize. I didn't have any internet in my area. No worries. Listen, you're here. You're with us. The fans were so itching for you to get here. So I know them seeing your face right now is making everything better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see any of your faces, but it's lovely to see your highs and hellos and comments. Exactly, you can see the comments, that is right. Well, for those who are just joining us, Ben, it is no secret that you are the star of the Netflix hit Shadow and Bone. What has it been like to see all of the excitement surrounding the series, Ben? Uh, it's actually been completely extraordinary. And I feel like I've just been on the I feel like I've been on the boat with the fans in that in that I think everyone involved in making the show became such instant huge fan um of of Lee Bardugo's books um which I still have a rather geeky uh, pile of right right next to me because I've been doing obviously other press interviews and everything so I I very carefully curated a little plant on one side and you know books on the other side <laughs> to kind of I uh, you know, show off the fandom of the people who are the, the creatives of the show. Um, and, and so I feel like we've just been on that ride with them in the, you know, the anticipation of the build up of from books to script, from script to screen and from screen to, to sort of fan reaction. It's like all coming together. And I think that's what makes people so excited. Someone who, you know, starts off reading the book, like you said, and then they're able to visually see everything that they've been reading about for so long is now exactly. in front of them. I mean, fans were dreaming casting you for the role of General Kerrigan. As did you say dream did you say dream casting? Dream casting, yes. <laughs> I've that's never heard that guess. before. I like I like that a lot. <laughs> they were dream casting you all over Tumblr and the internet as early as twenty thirteen. Did you know that? I, I I didn't know somebody wrote something recently about Tumblr which I find which I was found amusing because I didn't really know what Tumblr was. Um Somebody wrote that I knew about. Somebody wrote that I'd said, "Look, I'm on. I've been cast as this character on Tumblr ten years ago, so, so you should cast me." Um, which obviously I didn't do because I didn't know what Tumblr was. But um, I did see some. I think some old tweets that that Lee, the author, had seen um, or sort of approved of, in sort of suggesting me as as someone who might be able to play that role. Um, and that that certainly felt like. It definitely piqued my curiosity about going to it and thinking, because I think as an actor, I think I've said this so many times to people that I know, as an actor, yeah. you kind of wonder, you know, people ask you what you'd like to do next. And for me, it's usually based on my life. If I've just done something very serious and dramatic, maybe I'd like to do something with comedy. If I've done something evil, I'd like to do something romantic and hopeful because we like balance in our lives. But it's wondering how other people see you and how other people would like to cast you. Um, I think I think is always something that's sort of interesting and it always, if people sort of suggest you for something, then I think then it gives it that extra layer of curiosity for me to want to know why that is. It is interesting. You're so right. But the sky is the limit. And I feel like, you know, especially, um, you know, in acting, like you kind of show that you don't have to be confined to a box. Even sometimes, you know, we you get pigeonholed into certain roles, but you can constantly go after different things. But when you did hear, Ben, that you did land the role of General Kerrigan, what was your initial reaction? My initial reaction? I think, um, I think it was probably, because uh, I, I was a little hesitant because um, 
because I hadn't read too many of the scripts and things initially. And I knew that it was sort of filming in Eastern Europe, which I've done a few times before. I filmed um, a mini series called The Sons of Liberty in which I played Sam Adams, the founding father. Um, and I'd filmed that in Bucharest. And then going very, very far back, I'd filmed, uh, I'd filmed uh, Prince Caspian, the first Narnia film. Uh, most of that was shot in Prague. So I'd spent quite a lot of time in Eastern Europe and I think, you know, as you go through your life, you think, well, if I'm, I'm going to spend that amount of time away from friends and family and the things that I know, it's got to be important enough to me. Mm. And, um, and this one was filming Budapest and I hadn't been, um, but it was, it was to leave in less than a month, I think. And it's, so you feel like you're uprooting your, your life a bit, I think quite often. And, um, but then I read, I started reading the books and, and, and I just thought there's enough in this character to keep me curious. And, I, and I'd had lunch with Eric Heisser, who was our showrunner, and he saw, we had a chat about sort of being somewhat collaborative in terms of expressing the themes in the show that were important to us. Um, and, uh, and that was very buoying because I think also as you go through your career, you, want, you just want to be involved in, in, in the messaging of what you're talking about. And I think at its core, this show, is about identity and about where it is we feel like we belong. And, and that, that goes for all of the characters, um, I think on some level for those of you who've, who've kind of watched it. Thank you for all the hearts you'll send. Oh, and um, many, many have watched it. The level of knowledge and uh, attention to detail that all of your really have of all the different elements of the show is quite interesting to watch. I'm really curious, Ben, because you have been acting since you were around 50 years old that's like being a baby take us back to that moment when you originally got discovered well I yeah I don't know if it was discovered it what what happened was I was doing um a lot of music at my school um and just sort of singing actually in choirs and things like that and uh and then when I was 15 there was a man um named Jeremy James Taylor who came to my to my school who ran a company called the National Youth Music Theatre and he, um, that, that company had seen, you know, some, some, was a kind of a professional company, but for young people. So the young, uh, they would put on productions and everyone in the cast would be between 11 and 18, but they would be at professional venues and there would be sort of new musicals and things like that. And it was a company that I was so proud to be involved in and definitely sort of sparked all of my sort of insatiable appetite for doing this this kind of this doing this as a job and it had some alumni that were had gone on to amazing things I remember when I was uh when I was doing a, a a couple of productions actually I got cast in I got cast in roles and I would look in my because they recycled the costumes if they'd done the production a few years before and I had this amazing gray uh coat with tails and um and I looked in the in the back of the in the back of the thing and because you used to write your name in the back of it and it was written Jude Law <laughs> in the back of it and I thought oh I'm playing the role that Jude that Jude Law played a few years ago in this in this production and oh. um and it had been sort of Matt Lucas and Johnny Miller and Sheridan Smith and all these you know these people who'd gone on to do sort of great things um in in acting and musicals and stuff like that and uh so I did that for about five years um, every single summer we would go and put on productions in different places around the UK. Uh, and that's where I sort of caught the, caught the bug for it, for doing it really. Yes. I'm that's sorry about my, I need a new phone. My camera is, is, is rubbish. No, the fans are really loving that you listen to them and actually cleaned your camera. I saw someone say clean it and I thought it's not that it's just old, but I'm going to try and humor you anyway. I will get, is I ben promise, I promise whoever friend. that person was, I promise I will get an iPhone. 62b or whatever the latest one is is ben barnes not the most techie person is that just not your thing it's really not his thing <laughs> that's all me, right you should have seen me flapping about like a chicken when my internet wasn't working thinking i ruined it and then i got a message from spectrum saying <laughs> saying your your internet i was like oh thank god at least it's not my fault <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, oh God, Spectrum. Well, you are here and you made it. But Sorry, I just pulled them out, didn't I? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, never mind. Hilarious, oh my goodness. But speaking of your voice, what a voice you have. I mean, it's pretty oh, incredible. It's an incredible voice. People are so excited when they hear you sing. Have you ever thought of releasing your own songs? And Do you know what? Do you know what? I, 
I've been sort of loath to talk about it too much. I've mentioned it in one or two other places, but this, this, this last year and a half, we've been all locked away. And I promised myself for my upcoming next birthday, which shall remain numberless, um, that I would, <laughs> please don't, um, that I, um, that I uh, would get myself a, a, a piano, a real piano, as opposed to an electric one. And I did that at the beginning of lockdown because I thought, no time like the present, if we're gonna be locked down for a bit, I'm gonna do this. And I sort of worked up a lot of songs I've been writing over the last um, couple of years and I've been working on them with with some producers so that is um, that is something that is coming hopefully hopefully soon looking for a home for it so hopefully I'll find a way to kind of share that with with everybody as soon as I can just wanted to honestly the, the thought behind it was I love singing so much it was my first love when I was 19 I was sort of starting to make a a big band jazz album my first ever job ever was playing the drums in a in, in a production with that company I was talking about um, and I've done quite a few films with singing in them, but it was sort of doing impressions of American st folk street singers um, or, 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 you know, ridiculous Irish rock stars from the 80s and, you know, just different types of ridiculous singing, whereas this is more authentically just, just something completely from me. It's written by me, it's, um, you know, and all of that. So um, I'm looking for a home for it at the moment, but it is hopefully for those people who are saying why aren't you posting more covers at the moment it's because i'm trying to um put the effort into making something of my own i mean that is really exciting i think people are going to burn out once they hear um what these songs are that you've been working on but i i also play the piano so i know there's something oh do you i do since i was five yeah oh no that's that's my dream is because i had one so i had one lesson when i was about seven and um, the, the teacher was just horrible. She was just a horrible, horrible woman. And, um, and, <laughs> and, and, and then the next, um, the next pupil came in who I think was about three. And after my first lesson, she asked me where middle C was and I couldn't remember. Um, and, and then they, she asked this, this little girl who was three who just walked in where it was and she came up and played it and she looked at me like I was just, and I, <laughs> I never went back. <laughs> and and so and I regret it so much because I only really started properly playing the piano again just a few years ago, um, and and so that there was that you know thirty something year span where I could have been being brilliant, probably like you are. But not brilliant, but you know what? You can't. Look not bad. brilliant, but pretty good. <laughs> good not really but i'm pretty good but you know i think it really proves to a lot of people at home too the pandemic can really bring out new passions new and you're able to focus on them a lot more so in addition to playing how else are you able to stay inspired and motivated as creative in the last year because it's been so hard for so many people shadow and bone was that outlet yes that yes it is and, and and it's not even necessarily the acting part um that I find of course that's that's I feel I feel like acting is is more like feels like interpretation to me or in translation of something like that um you know you've got other people's words and you're trying to craft them but actually the the the, the bit that I get really excited about I don't know why I feel like this is overshare because it's because it feels geeky but the bit when I get first get the scene and I can sort of make a cup of tea and sit down and 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 look at it on the computer or whatever it is, and and then sort of write my thoughts about the lines and about you know how I might go about saying these things and which words feel important to me. You know, it's 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 words that really kind of um, I kind of I feel you know are the exciting part of it for me, um, and then it becomes about translation which of course I love do I love I love the, the you know the, the actual de filming days processes particularly on this show particularly with this cast because they are so fun and they're so excited and excitable and they take it so seriously it's funny it's sort of one of the younger casts I've, I've worked with and one of the sort of fresher most most eager casts I've worked with and people always say you know what are the pranks on set and I'm like they're, they're, I watched them struggle to answer because they're sort of like, well, they weren't really because we were so, so passionate about making it good and working hard on it, which is, um, you know, kind of a curious, you know, thing. And people are sort of disappointed that we weren't you know, mugging around, but actually we wanted to make it great. You can't have it, you know, every which way. Uh, obviously, we had a lot of fun doing it, but um, 
uh, so so yeah, that's the part that I I kind of really enjoyed. God, I've completely forgotten what you asked. Well, I'm curious. How would people be surprised to learn about sort of the behind the scenes of the show? Because, like you're saying, there's so much that goes into it. You guys have a cast of the best time, but what do people not they would want to? Well, I think I think there is there is some truth to this sort of element for me anyway, and I don't know how many other actors this is true for, but you kind of have to like, if you're doing a serious scene, I feel like you kind of have to almost shake out the sillies before you do it. So I think we'd find ourselves particularly in some of the locations, if there, there was one location, the Little Palace location, which is where the Grisha are kind of uh, living and training in, in the story. There was a piano in the, in the green room in the back. So we would go and have like, little sing-alongs between, between scenes and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, uh, or we would just kind of just like run around the rooms, you know, causing havoc or whatever. Um, actually, the others, Jesse would run around the rooms causing havoc and I would pretend to be ir ir upset with her and irritated and, you know, say, Jessica, come sit down. Uh, uh, so that was our kind of dynamic. You kind of sort of play on the character dynamics, which is kind of a fun, it's kind of a fun thing. Um, and, you know, but there's obviously so much to distract you. In some scenes, there are sort of peacocks walking around, actual live peacocks. In other scenes, there are obviously horses. Peacock. Yeah, just just real casually, just real peacocks casually lining the grounds of the little palace. Um, but I think you already feel like you're in a fantasy world. So so to to play to play in that world is a very natural, a very natural kind of thing. Right, and the hair, the makeup, the costume, such a huge part of the show. You posted a little clip of your Insta story last night. It was really showing what it was like when you all saw each other. Oh, really yes, yes. And I, and I wish I could have said, a, I should have probably, I need to be better at Instagram and do more interesting things because my thought was, oh, I should talk them through this day because um, it was actually a really felt like a special day. We'd been there quite a few weeks already and we'd had some, we'd had some read-throughs of, of, of the show, um, sort of just sits quite dryly sitting around a table. They would put microphones in front of you and you would sort of just read through the episodes and try and make them exciting. But you're sitting in your chair and you can't get up and you're trying to breathe life into it. And um, this day was was sort of a bit less pressure in a weird way. It was just, we, we all were made up and then put in our costumes for the first time which we'd all seen our own costumes, obviously, in the fittings, but we hadn't seen anybody else's. And yeah. and this was all six of the sort of the main cast from the first day. Um, and and it was it was a bit cringy because it was a bit like a sort of the lighting was so incredible. And the setup was they sort of had this runway, this sort of Ravkin runway. Oh, that sounds quite good. That should be a TV show. Probably That's market yeah. that you should host it. Ravkin runway. Um, I'll be a judge. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming. I'll report on it. <laughs> that was sort of how it felt, though, because we were sort of sitting in these chairs, looking at this w weird runway, these beautiful lights, and everyone would come out from behind this, behind this uh, um, skiff, the, the, one of the skiffs that we had, the the ships which go on on sand in the show, yeah. and and uh, in their costumes, and kind of walk down, and they were even playing music, uh, sort of this big in the video. It's the actual score, but. But um, on the day, it was just sort of big, booming, classical music of some kind. And it was quite sort of thrilling to watch everyone sort of so, because everyone was so proud, I think, that they had got these parts and they were wearing their costumes and they were just sort of proud. There was real pride in it, which I think, you know, and not in the kind of sinful way, just in a, in a kind of just a really lovely way that uh, that they were just proud proud of themselves which is a lovely thing to watch in someone and and i think we were just sort of enjoying you know uh you know kit's early um pistol spinning skills and amita was showing off where she'd hidden all the knives on her costume and and um you know uh it was just you know me probably complaining that i was hot or something i don't know but uh uh it was it was it was just a very very special feeling day so so uh, yeah that is amazing. What a great story. Ben, we have so many questions for you that have come in. Please, and, and also take all the time you need, uh, I, you know, because I've, I've not got anywhere to go. You're so sweet. But before we get to the fan question, I'm going to ask yes. a question. I know a lot of people were also submitting last night before I put them on the screen. They mm -hmm. want to, you are the crush for a lot of people. What's oh, your Lord. relationship status, Ben? Sorry? What's your current relationship status? Oh, well, I never, I, I never, I never, I'm afraid, never really talk about that, um, that kind of personal stuff. I, I drew a line 
in the sand for myself quite a long time ago um, when when Narnia came out that 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 I thought it was important that you would have kind of you know one side of your one side of your life for yourself and one side of your life um, that, that you were sort of willing to share and I think I think it's all the same goes for sort of social media really I feel I feel very passionate about the people who follow me I just um, you know recently kind of hit that million follower mark and uh, uh, a, a while ago and I, I was thinking so hard about what I could do and eventually I ended up sort of writing this this sort of thank you poem because I see a lot of the same names for the last you know however I, I don't know how long I've had Instagram but I I, uh, I just sort of wanted to do something a bit more personal so I think it is important to share things that are personal and, and authentic um, but also I've always thought it was personal you know important to keep those things those things private totally. but um I, I will tell you this when I whenever I find whenever I find the one that that um whenever I find the woman that is going to be the one that I that I that I marry I'm sure I'll be no longer quite so coy about it um at, at, because it will it will be it will be what it is and then I'm sure it will it would stre stress me out less that people would be curious about it but um I like that answer we're going to be keeping our eyes out and putting all the positive words that way Thank let's you. Yeah. So some of those fan questions here. We have one from the user Nick Box Zero Four. Ben, which scene of Shadow and Bone was the hardest to film, and why? Which scene was the hardest to film? Um, well, I think I think physically, probably the thing that's jumping to mind is the fight between Kirigan and Mal in the final episode. No spoilers for anyone who hasn't got that far. Um, but um, I think just by virtue of uh, um, just by virtue of having a choreographed fight that you've practiced hard, but but then doing it in sort of leather boots with spurs and two two coats on sand uh, in the dark. Um, you... I think I think that's that's probably quite a difficult uh, that was probably quite a difficult element. But honestly, all all the rest of the scenes, I had it quite lucky. A lot of people had scenes where they were being thrown about and uh, you know in, in, in you know dunked in freezing cold water or 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 uh, you know dragged through forests and i think playing a character this powerful i think i think it was i was mostly sitting down or standing up inside um and quite comfortable and i and i and i would often tease the others that that uh, that i that was by that was because i've been doing this 20 years and now now i get to be comfortable <laughs> Well, speaking of a powerful character, this next question is from the user bar underscore Y. And she wants to know, Ben, your character is exactly one of the good guys, but yeah. do you think he has some redeeming qualities? It's a very good question and one that I've thought about a lot, I think. And I think it's a interesting territory to cover because I think he, whilst he is certainly the antagonist of the story, um, uh, whether 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 you would call him a villain or not is 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 kind of quite an interesting thing to navigate. I I, I do see him as a villain uh, as a villain, um, and I think because I because I think that a lot of the ground that he covers is is irredeemable, um, unforgivable um, ground. Um, I will say that in order to play a character like that, for me, the first thing that I would do is look at everything that is the opposite of what he is presenting. There is a, you know, there's a mask that this man presents to the world of superiority, of um, arrogance in, a, in, in some ways. Um, you know, he, he kind of oozes power and mystery, um, but also comes with that territory, a sort of a loneliness. And if, if, and, and if someone comes across like that, why does he? What is it, what is it that's made him lonely? What's made him this way? And and then I think that is there a is there a thirst for for connection for deep human connection is there a possibility for redemption in this man could he could he learn rele relearn for those of you who've seen episode seven could he relearn how to love could he relearn these things and I think you have to have hope even you know I told you earlier that the thing that in was interesting to me about the story was about identity and where these characters belong and I think that that kind of sense of hopefulness for where you belong has to exist in all the characters including the villain uh, and I, I think that's what makes them interesting to watch and you want to see more of them because you want to know if, if there is any element quite element of that you want to understand you know I think that's the one of the beautiful things about making tv in eight episodes or ten or 
because you get to expend longer with these characters and understand even villains have hopes and dreams and agendas and 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 I want to be able to understand them, not just have them wander around in black twiddling their moustaches and trying to ruin the hero's day, you know. Definitely. And when you, by the way, say, did this group, have they seen episode seven? This group has not only watched- This group has seen everything. Okay, I understood. <laughs> they have watched th this series, I'm not kidding you, I think like 20 times over and over. People say wow. they would watch during work, during school. So they are very much in tune with all of the episodes we love. This is a funny question here. What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Let's like shake it up a little bit. Oh, well, now you've said shake it up. <laughs> I can only think, shake it up, shake it up. That's all I can think of. But I can't think of any other ones now that you've said that. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll keep it to that one. We like that. Super, super good. Oh, my God. So many questions here, um, you guys. Someone wants I like these odd. I like those odd, uh, those questions, because obviously when the show comes out, you're answering, you know, tell us, tell us what the show's about a lot. And so I like the ones that are a bit weird, but that's good. Yes, there are many. There was another question here. Someone was like, how do you take your toast in the morning? Was I love all the rants. Um, oh, I bet they. I bet they saw recently a, a game we did. With, uh, I, I talked about how much I love toast. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I love toast every which way. But I particularly love it with peanut butter or uh, raspberry jam um, and butter. But I don't love it together, which I know is very American to put them together. But I like them separately. We do do that over here a lot. There's a question here um, from Saint Star Cove wanting to know a very important question for Ben. Is it true that you graduated literature honors? Uh, I did. I did a degree. I did a degree which was a combined degree of English literature and drama. But it was the history of drama rather than practical. It wasn't an acting course. Um, it was theory of drama, and I did. I did both um, subjects. And yes, I did. Uh, I did graduate with honors. I even got. I actually. I'm, I've actually never said this to anyone. I think only my mum knows this. But I. That I actually got um, an English. The English prize that year it's the only thing i've ever won ever ever <laughs> ever i've never won anything for doing what i do for the last 20 years but i, I when i was at college i won uh, i won actually and it was a, an essay prize i think for, write, for writing um uh, you know Eng english essays about and i was studying children's literature so i was writing essays about harry potter and and uh, the hobbit and and his dark materials and all those sort of that sort of uh uh younger uh, style of literature and about uh, you know the themes in it and stuff so this talking about this stuff suits me very well apparently <laughs> i love this all right we're gonna take one more fan question here then i have another question for you okay is, when will we speak in a rom-com oh do you know what rom-coms probably people know are my favorite films um uh, one of my favorite films of all time is when harry met sally um awesome. i've been looking for a film that can compete with that in terms of its, you know, in terms of its, it's kind of the ground that it covers and the comedy. I love every Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan and anything with Julia Roberts ever. Um, and I always thought that I would be more down that path, that Hugh Grant-esque path, uh, because I feel like that almost sort of suits the actual me uh, more than the, the kind of um, psychopaths that I have been asked to play as of late. Um, but I, 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 get, I promise you, whoever, oh, it's gone. But whoever asked that, I'm, I am looking for it. I'm looking for uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Yes, um, I am looking for uh, for a rom com. I actually found one recently that I loved. I read it and said, "Yep, I want to do this one." And um, I, unfortunately, I'm not I, timing wise. I, I, I they, they wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't work out. So, so I'm still looking. So, uh, uh, you're on. If you've got, a, if you've written a brilliant one, send it to my manager or something, really, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the next Harry Met Sally always. There you have it, you guys. Ben is open. Send it his way. All right. My question for you, as we start closing this out here, is when you look back on everything that you've done throughout your career, what stands out to you as being the proudest accomplishment and moment so far? Oh, there are so many in different, in different, in little different ways. I will say, I will say. It took me a long time to feel proud. Um, I think, I think, like probably a lot of us, you know, we sort of struggle a bit with 
you know, how we see ourselves and our accomplishments. Um, and, and I think it was probably at least 10 years of doing this before I could bear to sort of watch myself not through two fingers like that and think, that's actually all right. Um, and I think particularly as I had more experience with life and more things happen to you and you endure more, um, you just endure more experience. Um, I think it kind of frees you up a bit as an actor to, 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 to say things in different ways um, on some level. And, um, and I think, I think I was obviously very proud when I got the Narnia films. I was very proud when I first got a job at the National Theatre in London, because when I was a kid, that was all I ever wanted to, that was the only place I ever wanted to work. Yeah. Uh, and then when Narnia came and I got that job, that felt like an extraordinary step for me. Um, but I would say probably all the way through to, um, I did a small film called Jackie and Ryan uh, with Catherine Heigl, where I play a street musician, which I'm very proud of. Um, it was the first one that I sort of watched all the way through and thought, oh, this is a good film. I, uh, and I don't really see much of myself in there, but I do see little moments. Um, so I'm very proud of that little film. So if you haven't seen that, go and watch that one. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then I was very proud to be a part of the Westworld cast. That was amazing. Um, and then I was very proud to be cast as a, as a sort of powerful, tough villain opposite John Bernthal and The Punisher. Um, you know, I just thought, you know, that sort of whole Marvel thing was a really cool thing to be um, to be tangentially involved with. Um, uh, and, and and then I'm really proud of how this this show is done. And I was just so I was so passionate about this show doing well for all the young cast in it. I just really wanted it to be a hit for them. So I'm thrilled that it is basically. And look, you can't just pick one moment. So many exciting ones. And I didn't pick one. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you don't have to. I love that you picked all of them. It goes to show how important all of these different roles mean to you. And um, it's awesome to see. And like you said, the fans here are so excited about the show. And I know everyone just wants more and able to have you today. And for the fans to get some of their questions, and has meant so much. So we so appreciate the time. Oh, and you're so welcome. Thank you so much, all of you, for for being interested and, and curious and for all your brilliant questions and all your lovely heart emojis and all that. <laughs> so many heart emojis. That is for Thank you, Ben, so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. We got to kiss you guys. We love that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching us over on Tomorrow by Today with Ben Barnes. This conversation will be saved on our feeds in case you missed some of it. So you guys can go back and watch it over and over again, just like you guys do with Shadow and Bone. We'll be back here next week with a whole new guest over here on Tomorrow.